Catherine Brennan here from Intelligent Property. Sometimes forget to introduce myself. Most of you probably know my face by now. So I was about to title this one Leadership Lessons from My Plasterer. But I suppose it's observations on um, life, wealth and 40 something. So I am working on a job at the moment that most of the guys would be around my own age, say most of the tradespeople. And I find quite an interesting thing. All of these guys have much, much, much bigger business pre-2008 recession. Um, similar to myself, really, I had a big portfolio where now I focus on flips and assisted sales. And why did we not go back to doing the same thing when things returned to normal? So, for example, my plasterer was a very, very interesting guy. He had 50 plasterers working from them, were doing jobs all over Ireland. He's now gone back to just work on himself and his son. Actually, have four father and son combinations, which is really, really interesting dynamics to watch it play. And I suppose they look at me, I'm an accountant, a financial advisor, and they perceive that I have an easy job, a soft job. And... Two out of the four of them said to me recently, the reason to bring their kids to work is that they hope the kids will stay at school and get easier jobs than they did. And I laugh to myself and I say to them, my world is full of accountants, solicitors, a couple of dentists, and even doctors who want to get away from being in a room at a desk. Um, and they want freedom and they want to create something and they like to see the transformation in houses. And these guys find this so fascinating because the jobs that they perceived as being top class jobs, um, what I see is now the reverse. It's people trying to get out of the corporate world and out of the jobs that everyone perceived as being amazing and something with more purpose, or something with a bit of creativity in it. Um, and what I notice is a um, couple of these guys who, as I say, would have had very big businesses, I'd, I'd have fairly decent buy to let portfolio. And I realized initially I couldn't go straight back. I couldn't borrow again. Then I started to do flips. I started to do assisted sales. And then I got myself into a situation where I could have gone back to having tenants and build and build and build and, build and more and more and more and more and more. But by then I'd actually turn 40. And I think um, something just... Around that stage, something switches in your brain that you begin to realize you've maybe been working 15, 20 years. You begin to realize this is all a bit ridiculous. Do I actually need all this hassle, stress, phone calls? You can never leave down the phone. And um, when you've, you know, I suppose whenever I'd have had maybe 50, 10, and some of them were short lets, the big people locking themselves out. Yes, I did some brilliant agents, but ultimately it all gets sent up the line to you when there's a problem. They're locked out. We've had a complaint from the police. Um, some foreign countries, I'd stuff abroad as well. If your tenants cause a problem, it's you who gets a record. Um, so there's one for the books before you rush out to buy a property in, in Mary Islands, that was, for example. Um, so I had loads and, you know, I had lots and lots of assets. But I had very little freedom. I had very little time I could actually switch off the phone, even put down the phone. Um, I had accountancy clients as well. I had just assumed, I suppose, you're you're grown up taught, you're, you're taught to try and push yourself as far as you can. You're smart, you could do this, you could do that, you could do the other. Why don't you take on a couple of people, grow your business? So I followed all the traditional wisdoms, I suppose. And then when it all fell off a cliff and I initially got over the initial shock and I started to do property again, but in a different way, in a very hands-off, project-based way, I've begun to realise I don't ever want to have tenants again. I don't want to ever hear about a broken washing machine ever again. And actually, I don't want 10 staff. I, I just don't need the hassle. What do I need it all for? You know, I want a comfortable standard of living, but my freedom is more important to me than any of that. And I think an awful, awful lot of people are having this epiphany probably around age 40. We've already spent a fortune on education and education and more education. But it's, it's you know, life, you're evolving as you go along, as you get older, what you want definitely changes. I mean, the people who ring me and tell me they want 50 rental units, they're always under 40. They're, they're often male as well. Just by coincidence, there is more men in the property game. Um, 
sometimes women probably, if they've kids and things, they have more other responsibilities. They're a bit more mindful of the hassle and responsibility to start with. But uh, for me, um, for me, definitely, there's a turning point. So beware that even if you're in your 20s now and you think you want 100 units and you'll never ever want to stop, there will come a time. I'm seeing the 37, 38 year olds, even the most ambitious of people, certainly ask themselves, what am I doing all this for? For me, what I, my perfect scenario is probably a 20 hour week, um, with enough, enough income to travel anywhere I want, anytime I want. But I never would want to give up 20 hours either because having nothing to do. I was retired for a while when I was 35 and it was as boring as hell. It's great for a year while you're going places. It's boring as anything then. Having a purpose to your day is very important. But just, um, this may seem like a slightly raveling video. Just be aware that as you get older, what you want will evolve. A category of people I'm really, really interested in helping is the people who are 40 in the world and are maybe in a big corporate job or have a professional services firm. Um, most of my management consulting was done with solicitors, accountants, techie firms, um, service companies. And um, so I'm very, very aware of the challenges of running those businesses. I would absolutely love to chat to some of those people who are saying to themselves, how on earth can I get off the hamster wheel? I'm sick of this. You know, I enjoyed lockdown. I, it's when it slowed down a bit and now I actually want to plot an exit, but I cannot see the exit ahead of me. So I would absolutely love to chat to people like that and putting together some ideas for a program for that, because that's very different to just saying, I'm going to do a course on flips and rush out and do them. You have a business to consider. You need to replace yourself first in the business or look to see if you can sell the business. And you cannot do that without a level of confidence that you can bring in the income. So, and um, just some ramblings from an over 40 on what will eventually come to all of you if you're younger and those of you who are on my own age are probably experiencing this already and um, look up the story of the mexican fisherman it's my favorite parable ever and um, it's about a mexican fisherman obviously who just works to live he doesn't live to work he works to live so he fishes enough to feed his family sell a bit and relax with his friends at the beach every day and it's the story of when he meets an American who's telling him, you know, to gear up and um, get a corporation, get some trawlers, you know, all the usual stuff. And this whole story goes on that, of course, what would he do at the end when he sold the company for millions and billions, having run himself into the ground with stress and hard work? He retired to a quiet Mexican village and enjoy a beer and a guitar with his mates, which is exactly what the man is already doing. So... Before you rush out there and buy 10 buy to lets and um, slow down, if you're in the 40 plus category, by all means, knock yourself out if you're in your 20s. But I'd also would suggest you, you buy your assets in a way that you could sell them off in that again. But I would really love to be speaking to people trying to exit professional services and high pressure jobs and trying to really look at their whole life structure, not just their income structure. Um, I can quite, it's not a, cha a huge challenge for me to teach somebody how to make 100 grand a year doing flips, um, even with a limited amount of capital. So I'd love to be hearing from those people. That to me is the, is the really, really interesting thing, is when you're uber qualified to do all these jobs, but you're beginning to have that realization, do you actually want to? Or what's next? What are you going to do for the next 20 years? Are you going to continue to give the best years of your life to the job? And by the time you retire, you mightn't have the mobility or the health to do all the things that you wanted to do personally. So, hope that's some food for thought for you guys. All the people I know who have downsized their work commitments are really, really loving this. So, pop us an email, pop me a message if that's of interest.